Welcome to this tutorial in Xcode. I'll be using Xcode 11.1 .1 and also Catalina 10.15. A lot of the features that I'll be looking at today are also available in other versions and especially the newer ones. So let's get underway. Well, one of the first things we need to do is actually create an Xcode project. So let's start there. Once you've opened this, if you need more information, please go have a look at a previous tutorial. Look in the comments. I'll make a link there that gives you more of an explanation on how I set up my projects and why. But I'm just going to click on next. I need to give it a project name. So because we're going to make it like a cookie clicker type program, we're just going to call this one BSmash. I've got my organization identifier, etc. We're going to be using the Swift language. We're also going to be using the UI kit and therefore we're selecting storyboard. I'm going to leave these two ticked at the moment as well. So click on next. It's going to ask where to save this. I'm going to save this in a project on my desktop. And once it's been saved and your project is ready to go, you'll be able to click on the main storyboard. Now I've suggested to a lot of people in my previous tutorials, it's a good idea to design in iPhone 8 because it uses less resources. It's also up to you if you need a portrait or a landscape orientation or if you'd like to work in the light mode or the dark mode. In this case, I'm going iPhone 8. I'll be testing also with the iPhone 8. That way my graphics card's not under pressure or my CPU and my program be a little bit more responsive. Now, once I've set these sort of parameters, I can then start looking at the different objects that I can place on my storyboard. It is suggested that you actually design your program before you develop it. There are tutorials on my YouTube channel about this and I'll also place a link in the comment when it's available with information directly related to this tutorial. Now to add something to the main storyboard, make sure that's selected. If you're in the view controller where the coding's occurring, please make sure you select the storyboard. In here, you actually have the view controller up on the top here. So you have what's called the UI navigator on the left hand side here, but we're gonna be mainly looking at this little area here as we work on our view controller page here. When I select the screen, you'll notice that the safe area can be highlighted. Where this blue area is means that any object can be in that space and be clickable on the device. So it's a safe area for you to operate in. You'll notice if you're using the XR version or iPhone 11, there are a couple of little spaces where you can't actually put objects. And that's okay. At least we know clearly where we can work. We're going to be looking in this tutorial at constraints as well, which is very important when we're trying to orientate items on our screen. So let's look at how we can actually place something on our screen. It's a little bit different in this version of Xcode, but you'll find it up the top right hand corner here where the plus sign is. This will give us our library. When we click on this, the library will open. You can search for the object by using the actual finder, or you can actually scroll through the list and see what's available. You'll also see you've got your view controllers, but the main ones we're gonna be using will be at the top. So a lot of the projects you do in beginning tutorials require you to use things such as labels, buttons, text fields, and also sliders and switches. Today's project is going to be using labels and buttons. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to place the objects onto my stage. So first of all, I'm going to click and drag the label out and just let it go. Okay, if I need another label, I can go back in click and drag another one out. Or I can select a label and just go copy and paste. And that will also give me another label on stage. Also, I need a button. So I'm just gonna drag out and drop the button on stage at the moment. You notice that there's no orientation with these labels or buttons at the moment. If I select the issue navigator, you'll actually notice that these objects that have been placed on the stage have a problem. So we need to resolve these as best we can before we test our program. So let's move these into a more appropriate spaces. So one of my labels is gonna be a title. So let's use this one here as a title of our program. Let's place it in the middle. You'll see these guidelines appear and then looking at how you can actually align them on the, the view controller. We know the button's gonna be at the bottom and this is the button we're gonna be clicking. Now I need a title. I also need a counter that shows me what count I'm up to. So I'm just gonna place that in the middle here. And I probably won't need this label at the moment, so I'm just gonna delete this. Now I can select it and push delete, or I can just select it in the view controller and I can push delete there. 
Now that I've deleted it, I can once again go copy paste and I can move one back into place. Now these positions are relative at the moment and we'll have a look at the reason for that a little bit later. So I'm gonna select this label and I'm gonna go up to the attribute inspector. The attribute inspector shows you all the properties of this label. So first of all, we can actually change the label to the title of the game. So let's call this beast smash. And when I click back on the stage, you notice the text has changed. The alignment's also changed, it's no longer centered anymore. So therefore, if I drag this back to the middle, it'll then center once more. I can center the text inside of that text box. So if I make the text box bigger, you'll notice it's sitting in the center of that. Also, I can actually change its attributes. If I click on the T here, I can then change what the font is, but I'll stay with the system font at the moment. I can change its style. So I'm actually gonna change this to a real heavy font. And also I wanna change its size. So rather than being 17, I wanna move it to 40. You notice that the text box has changed and therefore I need to stretch that out a lot more and reposition that on the page. The next one's gonna be the counter. So I'm just gonna change this label from rather than being label up here, I'm just gonna put display counter. Now it's gonna sit in the middle of the screen once more, but we can actually change some more attributes than just this. I can change its color as well. Now I can go with the default color, otherwise right at the bottom, you've got a custom color. If you click on the custom color, it'll open up the custom color wheel. Sometimes it's set to black and it'll look like this. So just grab the little slider, go all the way up to the white end. Then you can start clicking around here and you can actually see the color change here. So find a color that you're happy with. So in my case, I'm gonna to go to a really dark blue. And you can see that the color of the font has been updated as well. Then I can just close that. Once again, I can change the font and go to something like bold. And also I'm just gonna increase that as well to say something like 30 and recenter that. I'm also gonna center the text as well. There are other attributes in here as well you can play with. The last one is the button. So let's select the button. There are attributes for the button as well. So we can change its text color if you wanna move away from that. So if I wanna change that to a green sort of color, I can actually just select that out of the list. And also I can change its size as well to make the button text a lot bigger and go to something like 50. So this becomes a button hit area. Now we can also add a background color to our object as well. So we can scroll down through its attribute panel. Down the bottom here we have background. At the moment it's default is blank, but we can actually find a contrasting color for that if we wish. Now you find that some of the colors may not match. So therefore make sure you use a contrasting color. There is a rule to this. And the simple rule is if you've got a bright foreground color, something like yellow, that goes well against a dark background like a very deep blue. So light foreground, dark background, or if it's a light background, use a dark foreground. Another thing I would suggest you doing is using things like pastel colors. So a very soft blue would work really well with a very contrasting dark foreground color. Pastel colors are a lot more gentle and make the end user feel more at ease when using the application. So in a way, pick soft colors. You can also go to different triad colors where you may have a soft green on one side and then for the text, to do a good text for this one is use the triad color. So once again, move into custom colors and pick an opposite color that might be a lot stronger. So in some cases go in on the wheel on one side and out on the wheel on the other side. So let's go with this color at the moment. It may not be the most pleasing, but it gets the point across. Now this is a button. If you do want to have an image, you can add images, or if you want a background icon, you can come in and select an, a picture as well. There's one that's a snowflake. So if I put in snow, you'll see that it goes straight down to snow, and I can select that and it puts it in the background here. Now there are some issues with the contrasting, but that's okay at the moment. So I have my device all set up with the um, title, where the counter is going to go and also where the button is where they click. So let's just test this. So I'm going up to the testing area. I've selected iPhone 8 
and this is my testing area here so this is also known as the build controls so I'm going to hit play on my build control to start the simulator if I had my phone plugged in I can always select my phone and push it straight to my phone to test it on that and that sort of gives you more of a real authentic sort of feel for your application rather than using a laptop or a desktop computer once the build's completed you should be able to open up the simulator and see your application come to life so this is my application at the moment you can see I can click on this button but nothing's happened because we haven't written any code yet but you can see it looks okay at the moment but sometimes when you run this on different devices like if we change the device maybe to an iPad and click on play you can now see that the orientation and the layout is not quite the same so what we need to do is actually put into our projects what are called constraints constraints anchor down our objects onto our display so let's have a look at how we can put constraints in to give you an idea that constraints are required if we actually go up into the left hand corner and have a look at our issues navigator you can actually see that the objects have got a problem with their layout let's start fixing that to do that we're going to be selecting an object and we're going to use down the bottom right hand corner the layout constraints so if I select this here we can add a new constraint and I want to place a horizontal constraint Horizontal constraint is the one that goes left to right. A vertical constraint goes up and down. If I add a horizontal constraint in a container and a vertical constraint in a container, it will place it directly in the middle of our screen, somewhere around about here. So it's a good idea just to place the horizontal ones, which center it into our screen left to right. And I'm gonna add this constraint. You'll notice in our issue navigator, one of the issues have disappeared. We can also do the same thing for display counter we'll add a constraint and container to that and also to our button now this has fixed all our horizontal you'll notice now it's actually got a vertical position problem where it's ambiguous because it does adjust up and down as well to fix that if I select the title hold down control click and drag to the top of my screen you'll notice I can get to the edge of the safe area and then when I release my click it brings top space to safe area so if I select that it develops a constraint to the top if I open up my constraints in my view control you can actually see the constraints being built here so you can see the new added top safe area it's also got a measurement as well you can see the constraint has 53 to the top three pixels I can also do the display now the display can either reference to the top of the safe area or it can actually reference to the B smash title this way it holds its vertical spacing this one works from the top this one's works together and this one here will always be this distance away from the counter let's check this now in iPad Pro 11 inch and see how it looks now we have a build success and on our display now you notice it's centered to the page and it has the same spacing as our iPhone 8 it's a little bit smaller and that's due to the screen resolution size but once again we still have a button that works but this time the vertical constraints work and the horizontal constraints if you need to adjust the constraints you can always delete them from here or you can select them on screen and delete them as you can see I can select them individually when you're selecting other objects you can actually run constraints out to the right hand side and left hand side and you can have multiple constraints as well on a particular object you can add more objects to the stage such as sliders and switches but it's up to you to design your project and build the interface that best suits the user so in this tutorial we've shown you how to add objects also work with their attributes create buttons and add backgrounds and colors and fonts and simple images to buttons we've also looked at constraints adding constraints and deleting constraints 
So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Xcode UI kit tutorials.